Hello and welcome to this introduction video of my Oracle BI video tutorial. I have planned a whole series of videos covering simple topics like how to build a table and make it look good to how to build sophisticated narrative views. But before we start, there are a few things we need to know about Oracle BI. So let us first have a look at the Oracle BI environment and the main development tool I will be using called Oracle BI Answers. We typically only work with the Oracle BI development tools, but there is a few things to know about everything that happens beyond that, the things we normally never get to see, especially in a cloud environment. There is, for instance, the logical representation of data in the BI business model. When we build our reports, we do not build them directly on the database tables. Those would be way too sophisticated for anybody to understand. A customer, for instance, a customer definition could be made out of maybe five tables, six, seven, ten, twenty, a hundred, I don't know. I don't need to know. All I need to know is that I have something called a customer. So instead of attacking directly the Oracle database, I build my reports against a logical representation of that data called the business model. More on that in a second. The data itself, as I said earlier, I don't really need to know where it is or where it sits. The only thing I need to know is where does it come from? Is it a real-time environment, like typically the cloud applications today? Or is it a data warehouse, where we have aggregated data coming from all kinds of real-time sources? In the context of sales cloud, there is not much else to know about the data sources because we don't really have access to the database directly. The data source for Sales Cloud is also known as OTBI, the transactional BI environment. Transactional meaning we are hitting the live transactions as they are at the database the moment we run the report. There's a few things that we can do to interact with this data before we run reports on top of it though. By denormalizing the product catalog, we will be able to make reports on top of the product hierarchy much more easily. And the same is true for the customer hierarchies. We denormalize them for faster report building and execution. Another way of interacting with the data source is through the Sales Cloud App Composer that allows us to extend standard objects by adding fields or by building whole new custom objects and building relationships between these objects. Now a little bit more on the business model. We do not really want to know, as I said earlier, what the database really looks like. We want to be able to interact with it in a more logical way, a more user-friendly way. And this is done by adding the extra layer between the tools and the data sources called the business model, where we build these star schemas. Star schemas where we can relate numbers or facts and put them in the context of what we call dimensions. For instance, I could have the number of opportunities for a certain type of customer that has bought a certain product, or the number of successful meetings in the context of a certain lead for the customers of a certain size. So as I said, the business model is a logical representation of the data through star schemas. These star schemas actually correspond to the subject areas that we choose when we start making a new report. But more on choosing subject areas later on. For Sales Cloud, we can't really, as with the data sources, interact with the business model. We actually don't have to. As soon as we add a new field to a standard object, those fields are automatically added to the existing subject areas. Thereby, they become available for reporting almost immediately. It's only when we start building custom objects that we can go into App Composer and create some custom subject areas. These subject areas then can be used for report building on top of custom objects. When it comes to the tools to build reports, the BI platform actually has quite a lot of them. Tools, each with a specific purpose. 
There is, for instance, the Oracle BI Answers tool that can be used to build sophisticated reports. It is the main tool I will be using throughout this video tutorial. Furthermore, there is BI Delivers, a tool to schedule and deliver reports. I will be addressing this in one particular episode of this series. There is BI Publisher to generate documents like uh, PDF documents or PowerPoint presentations. And there is a few extra things like Microsoft Office plugins and something called MAD, the Mobile Application Developer. More on this later. Within the context of Sales Cloud, there is an extra tool. There is the BI Composer, a tool that should be intuitive enough for people without having had any training to build some simple reports. Earlier on, I stated that Oracle Sales Cloud can only report on the live transactional data as it is in the database the moment that reports are built and executed, also called OTBI. That is not entirely true. Oracle Sales Cloud also has a system to take snapshots of opportunity data, whereby the state of all opportunities are frozen in time and by which we can build reports on top of a series of these snapshots. This allows us to see the trends and how these opportunities are evolving over time. It actually works like a kind of a data warehouse, but technically it is not one. Another source to report upon is the Oracle Incentive Compensation module within Oracle Sales Cloud. Here, calculations are executed on a regular basis and the results are stored for analysis and comparison, again resembling what the data warehouse does. And since we have the results of these calculations, we can set them out over time and start analyzing trends or spot anomalies. Something new Oracle is launching now is what we call OTBIE, which is using the same tools and an out of the box business model, a full blown data warehouse, not just for Oracle Sales Cloud, but where all the Oracle Cloud applications can feed data into. And not just the cloud applications, we could even feed data from other applications on premise or custom built. Oracle had such an enterprise data warehouse ready to go for applications already for quite a long time on premise. The big difference with OTBI E is that this now has moved into the cloud. But let us first now have a look at the Oracle BI environment we will be using for the rest of this series. When logging on to Oracle BI, you end up at this home page. From here, the entire suite of Oracle BI tools is available to anyone who wants to build reports. You can find the links to start creating new BI answers reports or dashboards, the BI publisher documents I mentioned earlier. Another few tools we can find here are the downloadable BI desktop tools that we will mention in a, one of the later episodes of this BI video tutorial. From here we can access the catalog. The catalog is a collection of reports and dashboards that are available to me, that I can edit or open. Here I can save reports for my personal use, or I can share them with other people so they can benefit from them too. Another very nice feature to find here is the archive and unarchive options. All of the reports and dashboards I will be building throughout this series of video tutorials will be archived and I will make them available for download. Archiving a report is very simple. You select it and under more you choose archive, after which you select the location where you want to save the report locally on your laptop or desktop. This will generate a catalog file. Afterwards you can select a folder and unarchive an existing catalog file and load it back up into the BI environment. This is ideal for moving reports between development and production environments. Most of the reports I will be building for this BI video tutorial will start like this. I go into new, select analysis, and then I have to choose a subject area. As I said earlier, these correspond to the star schemas in the business model. Selecting the right subject area will provide me access to a certain set of data. For this video tutorial, I will 
mainly use the sales CRM customer overview subject area to opportunities products real time subject area and the sales activity subject area. A detailed description of the Oracle Sales Cloud subject areas can be found on this website. Creating a report using BI answers is about two things. First, we need to find the right data, about selecting data in the business model. Here I am using the CRM customer overview subject area, and I have a choice between selecting dimensions and facts, as I mentioned earlier. In this case, I will choose a dimension called customer name, and I will be adding one fact the number of activities. Other actions I can perform here are adding filters, like only selecting customers of a certain country or an industry, sorting my data, editing the formula behind these facts and dimensions. For instance, I could change the customer name to uppercase or multiply the number of activities with the time spent on these activities using functions could go into column properties to define the formatting of the data and add filters as I mentioned earlier. When I have selected the data I want to see in my report, added the filters and functions in order to get the data exactly as I want it, I can start thinking about how I want to visualize the data. This is done under results. The interesting thing is that for every data set that I have selected under criteria, I can create any number of visualizations. Here I have two already, a title and a table, but I could add a second table or a third table, maybe a number of graphs. I can add what we call any number of views. You could add tables, pivot tables, performance styles, tree maps, trellis, all kinds of graphs, all kinds of gauges, funnels, we could play with maps, or go into more advanced functions like a column selector, a view selector, narrative reports. All of these will be covered during this BI video tutorial. Under criteria, I could add formatting for the data, whilst on the results, I can add formatting for visualization. Another thing we can do here is specify how users can interact with the report by means of prompts. Now I am not a big fan of these types of prompts and I'll show you in one of the episodes the alternatives that I typically use. And this concludes the introduction of the Oracle BI development environment. I hope you appreciated it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments and I hope to see you soon in one of the following episodes.